One thing you won't hear, though, is any mention of FBI Director James Comey testifying on Capitol Hill. Comey's testimony may have dominated cable television today, but the president did not mention it. We'll have more tonight on Director Comey's testimony. The FBI director spent more than five hours on Capitol Hill today taking questions from members of the House Intelligence Committee. It was a long hearing covered breathlessly by media from around the world. And by the end of it, we learned, what did we learn? Well, exactly pretty much what we already knew in November. Russia has a decades-long habit of international troublemaking. They make up stories. They break into vulnerable Gmail accounts. It was the Russians, remember, who dreamed up that lie that the moon landing was faked almost 50 years ago. So nobody doubts their capacity for mischief. And yet in this specific case, after months of probing, there is still precisely zero evidence that Russian efforts had any effect at all on our election outcome, much less that Russian saboteurs collaborated with Donald Trump or with his staff. But that doesn't mean we didn't learn anything today. We did. We learned that FBI Director Comey is oddly selective about which investigations he is willing to talk about. He confirmed to Congress today that the Bureau is investigating the Trump campaign. That was news. And yet at the same time, he refused to say whether it is investigating felony leaking by government officials who destroyed General Michael Flynn. I'm just simply asking you to assure the American people, you've already assured them you take it really seriously. Can you assure them that it is going to be investigated? I can't, but I hope, I hope people watching know how seriously we take leaks of classified information, but I don't want to confirm it by saying that we're investigating it. We also learned something about Director Comey's political views. When Democrat Adam Schiff of California asked him about Brexit, Comey had this to say. Would they have a preference for a candidate who encouraged Brexit and other departures from Europe? Would they like to see more Brexits? Yes. Now, how could Comey possibly know what the Russian leadership believe about Brexit? Well, he couldn't without clairvoyant powers. As if opposing the European Union is the same as being a Russian stooge. That was the implication. But most of all, we learn about the current state of the Democratic Party. What's the clinical stage after hysteria, but just before total loss of motor function and unconsciousness? Well, that's what it was like for hours today. Consider this observation from Congressman Denny Heck of Washington. Our battleships weren't sunk and our towers didn't collapse a la 2011. But make no mistake, 2016 is a year that we should mark on our calendars. And it's still going on. The attack didn't end on Election Day. So this is tantamount to Pearl Harbor 9-11. Keep in mind that Pearl Harbor 9-11 pulled this country into world-altering global wars that dragged on for years. Did Congressman Heck overstate? No. Not according to his con colleague, Jackie Speer of California. She described Russia's actions as, quote, an act of war, and Vladimir Putin as a tarantula who ensnares hapless Americans in his web. Now, in, in terms of trying to understand this, I, I think of a, a spider web with a tarantula in the middle. And the tarantula, in my view, is Vladimir Putin, who is entrapping many people to do his bidding and to engage with him. <laughs> Never mind that tarantulas don't actually catch their prey in webs. You get the point. Putin is evil personified, the world's number one supervillain and almost certainly our next adversary on the battlefield. Congressman Joaquin Castro of Texas got so worked up thinking about it all that he read aloud from the now famous BuzzFeed dossier about Trump like it was a real document. What should we make of all of this? How close are we to war with Putin? Joining us now is Congressman Art Swalwell of California. He's a member of the House Intelligence Committee. He was there all day at the hearings, at which he declared, I'm quoting, we were attacked by Russia. Congressman, thanks for joining us. So we were attacked by Russia. So the real question is, how do we respond? And so let's get specific. Yeah. Do you think we should use long-range or short-range ICBMs? We should use long-range san sanctions on Russia. We, could, we should expand the sanctions that we have. We should continue to investigate what they did. And today we learned from the FBI director, uh, contrary to what you said, there was new information that there are members of the Trump team who are under criminal and counterintelligence investigations but, for their role but, but, in but, Russia's but, well, interference. I, mean, I, I was aware of that, and I think most of us were. But, but leaving, wait, hold on. I want to take what you say seriously, okay? I so I, I do. I absolutely do. You said we were attacked by Russia. That's not a small thing. Yes. An attack doesn't just invite a counterattack, it demands one, else you reveal your fundamental weakness and get attacked again. So my question is, Carrier Strike Group 9 is the closest to Vladivostok right now. Should they be mobilized immediately? Should we notify our European allies that their, their natural gas supply is about to be cut off? What is our next step 
in our counterattack. I'll tell you what our next step should not be. It should not be a warmer embrace of Russia, as the president clearly has intimated he wants to do. The sanctions should get tougher. We should expand NATO's role, not contract it. And we should talk tough with Russia. And right now, we have a secretary of state who received the order of friendship from Russia. Tucker, Russia is not our friend. And not just for Cold War atrocities, for what they're doing in the Ukraine. Well, I don't think they are our friend. And for what they're doing in Syria. I don't think most people think they're our friend. I don't know anybody who thinks they're our friend. We should treat them as a friend. But we should talk tough in response to, quote, an act of war? In response to an attack? I mean, I can't imagine a more irresponsible response to an act of war than talking tough or doubling down on sanctions already in place or expanding NATO. I mean, we need a real response, don't you agree? A military response to an act of war. How can we do otherwise? Not every action requires a military response. Not every act of war requires a military response? So there are other, there's cyber warfare that you can conduct as well. But Tucker, if you take a step back, never in the history of of our elections has a country attacked us the way that Russia has. It was an electronic attack. Of course, it wasn't by a bomb or through a missile or a bullet. But they attacked us, and they tried to influence the outcome of our campaign. And I will, I'll be the first okay, to say it. They but, did not change but, any vote tallies. But, but again, no I'm, I'm, taking you, I'm taking you seriously. They attacked us. You say if this does not require a military response, but an electronic one. What would be a proportionate counterattack, which we both agree is really demand, is necessary on the basis of your description? What would that look like? What should we do to them? Sanctions? NATO? Let's be real. What should we really do to them? Well, we can squeeze their economy. That hurts them, right? You know, right now, Russia's economy is in a freefall. I think tougher sanctions should isolate Russia from the rest of the world. But right now... Is that going to hurt Putin pretty badly? Yeah, that'll hurt his popularity you think in it the country. Will? You yeah. think he's going to run out of vodka or have to move into a motel or something? Yeah, no, no. Tucker, I mean, this is a serious attack. No, no, for real, though. Our I mean, country. That's why we had a hearing today. And when I go home and talk to my constituents, they want to know, are we going to do anything, or is the next election going to see two, three, four of our foreign adversaries trying to influence and have but the most aggressive meddler get their preferred candidate. I mean, I, I think it goes without saying that I'm speaking half in jest because I think that the description of this as an act of war is hysterical. I mean, I think it's well, lunatic, it's a different actually. Type of warfare. But, but I'm just saying, this is, you're a sitting congressman, you had a, one of your colleagues, a senator, Senator Cardin from Maryland, call this an act of war. The Russians are listening to this, our allies are listening to this. I don't know how you can describe something as an act of war and then recommend in response tepid moves like, I don't know, sanctions. I mean, really. There's nothing that we have more sacred than our democracy. A free and so you're fair election. My question. No, th- th- you're saying the term. No. This is war, and you don't want to do anything about it. Th- no, I do want to do a lot about no, it. No, you... I want to increase. I don't want to do what you want me to do. About so it. what do you want to do about it? I mean, let's be really specific. What should we do? I'm taking yeah. you seriously. Yeah. What, what do you want to do? We should increase the sanctions against Russia. We should what would that mean? work with our allies in NATO to make sure that they also are not as dependent on Russia for their liquid natural gas, which right now Russia is one of the main sources for a lot of Eastern Europe. So you would be European for fast tracking natural gas ports on our coast to ship it to Russia? Isolate Russia more. But would you be for fast-tracking and make ports pay for what they did? You just said yeah. you want to make Europe less dependent upon Russian energy. That sounds wise. Yeah. We're the largest natural gas producer in the world. Yeah. So why wouldn't we want to fast-track those ports to make it possible for American natural gas producers to sell their gas to Europe? Are you for that? No, I'm for doing anything we what can that, to isolate Russia. And, and Tucker, but are you, for, are you for that? Because I know the Natural Resources yeah. Defense Fund is against that, but yeah. what are you are you for it? Yeah. I am for helping our Western <laughs> European allies. Okay, you get, brought it up, and I'm asking gas. you, yeah. do you really believe what you're saying? Of course do you actually want to saying. make Europe less dependent on Russian energy? I'm not Russia laughing did. either, I'm laughing at your yeah. response, yeah. which is, you're saying that we should help Europe become energy independent, but we shouldn't sell them the natural gas? Of course we should, and, okay. and we should help others do the same. But Tucker, again, it, people at home, they take serious our elections. These fights belong to us. You know, Republicans and Democrats can go at it back and forth. But as soon as an outside meddler comes in, that's off limits. And you, both you parties believe- should say, we're not going to tolerate this. And this is actually, I think, an opportunity for but- Republicans and Democrats to unify and say, never again will we allow ourselves to be in this mess. Because this as is a mess. As soon as you define the effect of Russian meddling, hacking, war making, whatever you're calling it now, on our election, then I think you'll have a chance of bringing people over to your side. What was the effect exactly? And I've asked you this many times, yeah. and you can't provide an answer. Yeah. No, I, I can provide an answer. Russia sought to tear down Hillary Clinton and lift up Donald Trump. 
and our intelligence agencies have concluded that. I believe our intelligence agencies, do you? So, um, I don't know. Sometimes I, I have a right, I think, as an American citizen to know more it's about patriotic. how they reach their conclusions. Um, but they sort of missed 9-11 and the fall of the Soviet Union, and so I think it's fair to be skeptical. I'm not lacking patriotism for taking that But there's position. been no counter evidence but that Russia heard, did not do this. No, but you heard the FBI director today say that Vladimir Putin hated Hillary Clinton, hated her. He personally hated her, and that's why he sought her defeat in the election. How would do you he think know? he made that up? How would he, or do you think I don't he know had... the answer. I'm asking you as a member of the Intel Committee. Yeah. How would he know something like that? I don't know what I think yeah. about things. We don't even know ourselves. How could he possibly know the innermost thoughts of <laughs> Why are we really Russia? here? I mean, you're, you're, no, no, you're it's trying a, to... No, no, it's a serious question. Yeah. Why would he allege something like that? How could he possibly know that? Because of intelligence reporting. Based on what? Through electronic sources that are in the public report that the intelligence community put out that he but there, there, there's no we indication have. of how we could know Vladimir Putin's innermost thoughts about Hillary Clinton and you're asking me well, to do you just think take we should tell the world it's how a, we collect intelligence no I think before or should we, we trust I, the people who do it I, I think before government officials change our foreign policy and declare war against a sovereign country as you all are attempting to no. do we citizens have a right to know on what basis you're doing that so if you're telling me you know what Vladimir Putin believes as a person I think it's fair to ask, yeah. how the hell would you yeah. know that? Well, again, we have an electronic source in that call between Michael Flynn and the ambassador. No, no, no. Right? I'm talking about Vladimir Putin's attitude about Hillary Clinton. The FBI director said today, yeah. I know that he yeah. sought her demise because he hates her personally. He yeah. said that. Yeah. I still believe you have to protect You just American believe him but you don't ask for evidence? No, I ask for evidence and I've received the evidence and I've reviewed the classified So on that report. very specific question, are you, satis you yes. are satisfied that he could know what Vladimir Putin felt in his innermost thoughts about Hillary Clinton? Beyond a shadow of doubt, satisfied. Shadow That's of my doubt. job on the intelligence committee is and to re are you review further that convinced that Vladimir Putin believed that Hillary Clinton would lose? Yes, yeah, I, I believe So that not only is Michael Flynn clairvoyant, but yeah. so is Vladimir Putin, because he's the only one in the world, basically, no, who thought, thought Hillary gonna Clinton lose. was going to lose. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he thought Donald Trump was going to lose, and he thought that the the desired outcome was to undermine Hillary Clinton, figuring that she was going to win, she would go into office so badly bruised okay. that she wouldn't right. have much Right. I've heard that theory, and let yeah. me just suggest one thing before we go. Doesn't all of this undercut that theory? Because, of course, the effect of this, and this is the effect of Democrats, this is why you're doing this, is to badly undercut the administration of Donald Trump. This weakens Trump. No, I I well, obviously, about our this country. weakens Trump. If Hillary Clinton had won, I would no, no, still but, want to punish the Russians if, for what they if, did. If Putin is this genius spy master, why would he be behind a gambit like this that winds up weakening a guy he supposedly loves? This hurts Trump. Why would Putin want to do that? He has a guy in there now who wants to roll back sanctions, wants to reduce the role of NATO. Putin is celebrating right now. If, in Russia. if Trump attacked Russia, would you be? If he said, you know what, I believe you, Congressman Swalwell, this is an act of war. I'm going after Russia with long range. Bombers. What would you say? Again, Tucker, this is no, not military say? versus non-military. I would say ratchet up the sanctions, isolate Russia, make Putin pay for this. But most importantly, in 2021, I don't want to be sitting here with you talking about another country that attacked us. <laughs> I will not take it seriously without evidence, but we'll still be talking about it, I'm sure. When Trump declares war against Russia, I'm going to bring you on and say, you bring me on. Thank yeah. you, Congressman. Thanks, Good to see you.